everybody, it's Tyler here at the Minnesota Signature Event here at Mall of America, checking in. Last year, they were on the dome, an incredible team, 2775B Jackson Area Robotics. Really incredible robot, especially so early in the season, as you're talking, you've got to take a look at this uh, arm that they're utilizing for the mobile goals. A lot of great stuff, the claw that's going on here, but other great stuff that goes into this robot too. We'll be talking about how they're uh, intaking here. Uh, I really like what they're doing. Some teams we're seeing a lot of those hooks go on. They're taking a different approach, so I'm excited to jump more into that how they're grabbing onto the mobile goals in other areas and a lot more too. So let's learn more about them coming up on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. So let's jump in. So much to unpack with this robot here, but talk to me about uh, one of your mobile goal functions that you have on the back of your robot. Tell me more about it. Yeah, so we have a mobile goal clamp on the back of our robot. It comes out with pistons and it grabs onto the mobile goal like that. And one thing that's good about our mechanism is that it can grab from several sides. So no matter the orientation of the mobile goal, whether it's crooked or at an angle, it can grab on. And that helps us to score rings with our that helps us to score rings with our intake. And um, well, I noticed on here too, you got a little bit of a kind of this lip that it kind of pops up on. When yeah. you were designing, was that something that you definitely had in mind for that? Yeah, so we definitely wanted to have a way for the mobile goal to slot in so it was held securely. Rather than just dragging it behind a robot, we wanted it to be seated securely inside the robot. So that was. Uh, part of the, what went into our design with this lip and then this top lip too that keeps it inside. We got a hold of a mobile goal, so let's talk about the ring journey coming through. Caden's going to talk about the intake uh, they have, so let's pass over to Caden and talk more about that. Um, you know, we mentioned earlier in the intro here that you're taking a little bit different approach than some of the other teams we've seen without the hooks. I really like this design. Let's unpack it more. Yes, so we chose to go with a flex wheel conveyor intake. So the way this works is the rings feed in through the front here. Feed in through the front and then it goes up along these flex wheels, they spin and bring it up. And when it gets to the top, they have this little hood thing that makes sure it's on the right track. And then it lands right onto this mogul goal that's kept in by our clamp. At the beginning of our design process, we actually uh, chose the hooks first and we tested that out for a little bit, but we found that wasn't as consistent as we would like it to be. And then we switched over to these flex wheels and these flex wheels are a lot faster and they're more consistent than the hooks. And that's why we decided to go with this. How'd you figure out like your spacing for your flex wheels, that sort of thing? Um, that was, depends heavily on the ring size if you notice it's like roughly on the on these on the edges of the ring so it has a decent amount of grip at the intake here there's more wheels because you're trying you're grabbing the in you're grabbing the rings from like a more wider angle and up here it there's less wheels because the path is more controlled See, I mean, I remember, uh, you know, last time we talked was back at the uh, Indy Signature event uh, way long time ago. Since then, made it to the dome. Congratulations on that. And we got to really talk about, I think, a big star of this robot, which is this claw arm here that you have going on. Talk to me more about it. This is very unique, especially so early on in the meta. Talk to me more about uh, how'd you come up with it and, of course, how it functions. Oh, uh, of course. So um, uh, we knew that we wanted some kind of mechanism that could score on wall stakes. So initially, we would have a, we had a two bar that was on both sides of the robot and had a claw that went around the front of the intake. After trying and testing it out, we couldn't quite get it in size. So I did a little bit of brainstorming, saw some other designs and figured out that you can grab the rings just by going on the bottom and uh, grabbing them through the hole. So we have a lift here uh, that runs at 20 RPM. And then we have a piston to deploy this claw out. So it just lowers, plays like that. And then it can, this table's a little crooked, but it can usually drive into the rings and then this piston activates and we can lift it up and score it on the alliance stakes and wall stakes. Uh, an additional function that wasn't quite intentional, but has turned out pretty good for us is the ability to grab mobile goals. So if we lower it down here um, and lift it up a little, you can actually see it gets in the lip there just a little. Um, it usually works best when the mobile goals are empty because they're a little bit lighter. 
uh, and it's best whenever it has more air, so like at the beginning of the autonomous period. But this allows us to, in the autonomous period, rush towards that goal that's on the center tape line and grab it before anyone else can. Yeah, we were talking to Nagsim earlier, and I really think the way this game's going to keep evolving is it's going to be that race for that middle goal there. It's going to be really interesting to see what mechs keep getting developed mm -hmm. uh, for that, which I, I think it's really cool that kind of that happy little accident that you had yeah. uh, with having that is, is always a great thing. Uh, to break down for that. As uh, we start to wrap up, let's pass over to James and uh, talk about you got a uh, level one uh, hang happening here. So let's uh, break down uh, where that is on your robot. Uh, and it looks like uh, overall just a very uh, effective uh, design that you have for it. Yeah. So this, uh, this ro rolls up the triangle shaped ladder to get a level one hang and it can go on the top of the triangle. And so far, as you've been competing, has it been working out for you? Yeah, so far. But sometimes, if you don't have enough time, you can't make it fully. So you have to just drive fully. Yeah, you just kind of send it a little bit, right? Just hope it makes it on there. So nothing wrong with that at all. Well, Jackson Robotics, congratulations so far on a really cool design. Uh, you know, I, I know as we go through the season, we keep seeing more and more innovative designs for your team. So we can't wait to keep following that process, see where you are. Good luck here at Minnesota Signature Event. Can't wait to see how your results are throughout the season. Thanks a lot for telling us more about your robot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.